George Will, Senior News Nation contributor, is with us now. I, I just can't seem to understand why universities that in 2020 had such a different worldview about uh, the need to create safe spaces and the need to protect their students are now so uninterested in protecting students who are facing calls for their murder. Uh, Leland, these fancy universities have dug a deep hole and fallen right into it. In 1967, when the universities were convulsed by opposition to the Vietnam War, students at the University of Chicago demanded that the university take a position on the war. The university responded with the Calvin Report saying, we are not here to tell people what to think, but how to think, and we are not going to, as an institution, take a stand. Fast forward half a century. A few years ago, Yale University was convulsed by disturbances over inappropriate Halloween costumes. Now they find themselves facing the predatory sadism of Hamas and can't find words to talk about it. What these universities have to decide whether or not they're going to have political agendas and take political stances or be more sensible and back off and say people can say what they want, they can't harass anyone else speaking, there can't be violence of any sort, but as an institution, we are neutral on public affairs. Well, so far, uh, sometimes silence says all you need to know in terms of in terms of how this this is viewed, at least morally. Um, this, I think, is interesting for the New York Post because money does talk, at least it used to, with these co colleges. Elite colleges are quietly slashing the level of donations which can secure a mission as mega donors close their checkbooks to Ivy League over anti-Semitism on campus. Now, according to one college counselor, a $2 million check might be the new $20 million. We've seen Bill Ackman at Harvard speak out and rally other donors to stop donating to Harvard. We've seen John Huntsman, uh, who has his name on multiple billions at the buildings at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, pull his funding. Uh, and then these slogans to slaughter Jews were then projected onto the Huntsman Building at the University of Pennsylvania. The question is this, why doesn't money seem to matter anymore to the university presidents? Because Penn and Harvard and Yale and Princeton are so ungodly rich, Leland, that it really doesn't matter. Harvard's endowment is approaching, if it hasn't already passed, $50 billion. A $2, billion, $2 million contribution doesn't matter to them. Princeton, which has, I think, the largest endowment on a per-student basis, has an endowment of about $34 million. Princeton could run itself without charging tuition, could pay all of its faculty expenses and support all its students just off what the endowment throws off. So when the, the alumni say, we're going to close our wallets, Princeton can say, well, we're going to close our minds because it just doesn't matter that much. Well, uh, th there's a term for that in terms of, of that level of money, that level of rich, and then you can uh, say to the, the donors, go, go pound sand. <laughs> Look, these university presidents aren't, aren't used to being spoken to and questioned. I thought, look, finally a congressional hearing where there were some tough questions asked, a congressional hearing that was illuminating. Uh, this back and forth between uh, Representative McLean and uh, the leader of Harvard. Take a listen. What action was taken from Harvard when a Jewish student was mobbed on your campus last month? Action, not lip service action, ma'am. So this specific incident, um, I've communicated with, I've communicated about publicly. So as you may know, that is an incident that is currently under investigation by HUPD and the yeah, FBI. Any action. And when that, and when that investigation is complete, so you can't we will address I'm it through a student disciplinary process. Question. Do you have an action item or not? We all know that if this had been 2020 and the kid who was surrounded at Harvard and faced chance of threatening to kill this young man had been black and the group surrounding him had been white, rightfully, the response of the university would have been very different. And my question revolves around this. During BLM, we were told that uh, if you said uh, Black Lives Matter and someone responded, all lives matter, you were missing the point, right? Because uh, Black Lives Matter had a very specific meaning. Uh, and in order to appear uh, woke or as an ally or even socially acceptable back then, 
you had to go along with that. You had to, you couldn't say all lives matter because all lives matter missed the point. Um, and we're seeing that same equivocation now, right? But it's working. Um, now it's acceptable to condemn all forms of hate rather than just condemn Jew hate. And I'm wondering, is there any explanation for the double standard other than we're talking about people of the Jewish faith? There is no other explanation. And what you're witnessing, Leland, is the death of something that has prevailed for more than a century. That is government deference to academics. That's over now. Exactly 20 years ago, in the two affirmative action cases that came out of Michigan, the Supreme Court said regarding the law school, we defer to the university's judgment because the universities are run by wise, thoughtful people determined to have institutions that are open to free inquiry. Not anymore. 20 years later, the tone of the questioning in the, in the, the film, you just, the videos you just showed us, indicates that no longer do we think of academics as the high priests of our society, as Justice Felix Frankfurter once referred to them. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.